Hey guys, so this morning on the operating table we have a Shin Daiwa commercial grade um, stick edger. This one is a LE262 made in looks like 2018, so it's not that old. I'll give you a little walk around of it. Apologize for the mess, the workbench is a bit chaotic at the moment. Slide you out. There's a look at the back of it. Shindai and Echo are pretty much the same brands. I believe this is Echo's um, 25.4 cc um, magnesium case engine with the two piston rings. So overall, it seems to be in reasonably good shape. Looks like it's due for a new blade. I don't know what's wrong with it. All I know is it's on the bench. My landscaper buddy said, can you take a look at it? So. I don't know if it runs, I don't know if it cuts, I don't know what's going on with it. So we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start it up and see if it actually starts. Given it's fairly young age, I'm not anticipating too many major issues with it, but who knows? Let's give it a shot. Here goes nothing. So we got the on switch on, give it a couple pumps. Probably need time for one of these purge bulbs. This one feels a little squishy. Let's see what happens, buddy, move, buddy. Get away from there. So the motor runs fine, but I don't see the edger blade turning. So watch the end down there. Give it some throttle. Nobody's home. Interesting. Okay. I don't see this problem too often. Normally it's a, you know, your typical carburetor gummed up issue. So this is something in the drive line. So off the bat, since the engine runs, there is a centrifugal clutch in that little, this little gear case down here. So that's a possibility. We have a, probably a flex cable in that aluminum shaft. So that's another possibility. Could also be something in the gear train at the bottom. Uh, my money's on either the clutch or the flex cable, so I think we're going to start there. Got it flipped around and back on the bench. I'm going to refine my guess and say it's probably the flex cable. I don't know if you guys can hear this. It's not a very good sound. I think our flex cable's broken. Okay, T27 Torx. And here to loosen the clamp and loosen the set screw right here. whole gear case assembly should slide off. Maybe I need to remove that set screw all the way. And this should just slide right off like that. So now let's pull our cable out and take a look at it. I think it's coming out in multiple pieces. Yep, there's part of it. Now, how do we get the other part out? Uh, we might have to take things apart at the engine side. T27 here as well. I don't know if this is, this is just a clamp. Oh no, it slides out perfect. Disconnect a few things. Electrical connectors, a throttle cable. Let's pull the air cleaner off and undo that throttle cable with the carburetor. millimeter. Loosen this nut here on top of the carb. That should 
allow the throttle cable to pop out. Should be in the operative word. Okay, got it. Alrighty. So we've got the engine and the pipe separated. Uh, maybe we can let gravity do the work and get the rest of the cable out. Yep, that'll do it. Yeah, you can see flux cable's pretty highly worn right here. It's almost worn smooth. Doesn't look like it was ever greased. That's probably part of the problem. So, time to order a cable. I think I might order, let's see what else this thing needs while I got it here. How's the air cleaner look? Not horrible, not great. Let me see what parts for this thing cost. So the flex cable was really cheap, it was only 12 bucks, or 13 bucks, so I'm gonna order one of those. Looks like the air cleaner pre-filter is coming apart, so we'll get a new one of those as well. Probably just an air cleaner. Um, I don't like to replace spark plugs unless there's a reason to do it, so I'm not even gonna bother with that. Um, I'm gonna replace the purge bulb, because I said before it's feeling a little squishy, I have those in stock. So I think that'll probably do it. Air filter assembly, flex cable, um, and I'll stick a new blade on it too, good measure. All right, I guess we'll pick it up when the parts get here. Parts are on order. In the meantime, let's, uh, the fuel line actually feels kind of hard, but we'll see. Let's change this primer while we're at it. First, I'm just gonna spray off the carb with some carb cleaner. It's pretty dirty. Actually, let me get some compressed air and hit it with that first. Yeah, that did a lot. Yeah, I did even less. So I usually use the aftermarket primers because they work just fine. The ones I use are made by Stens. I'll get you a part number. So I'm just taking these four screws off. Leaking gas from somewhere? I see something dripping. I don't think I sprayed that much carb cleaner. Oh, you know what it is? This is splitting. This is kind of splitting the carb in two. I want to clean this thing better. reason why is I don't want any of this crap to get inside the carburetor because then we'll create a new problem that we don't have currently. That's much better. assembly right onto a clean paper towel. There we go. This is what's left over on the carb, just this little plastic block with the fuel lines attached to it. Give that a quick little spritz, make sure nothing got in there. Looks good. So these are the primer bulbs I use. Again, purge bulb, primer bulb, whatever you want to call it. Leave a link in the description. I usually buy them by the shop pack because I go through them pretty quick. Just a simple matter of pushing this one out. Yeah, this one's gooey. And there's your new one. Let's clean this plate off. Get that with some compressed air. Most important thing when you're working on carburetors is to keep everything spotless because these carburetors are tiny and it only takes a tiny little spot of 
of grime to cause a major problem. So there, we got the new one installed. Take your four screws. For some reason the old one looks bigger. I did confirm that that's uh, the correct part. Unless my catalog is wrong. Let's put it back on the machine. test. Works just fine. Good as new. Alright, guess we're on pause till the rest of the parts come in. Okay, our parts have arrived. Uh, workbench has gotten a little crowded. I've since acquired a few more projects. Not really projects, but I ended up buying myself a new chainsaw here. This is an Echo CS355T uh, to replace my trusty old probably close to 20 year old Echo CS360T in the back. It's done quite a bit of work over the years, um, but it's just kind of at the point where it's not really worth putting a lot of money into. So I'll clean it up as best I can, keep it as a spare saw, but it's gonna be my, my go-to saw from now on. This thing's a beast. I haven't tried it yet, but it's, they made quite a few nice design changes to it in the last 20 years. It's, I mean, it's essentially the same design saw. Um, I know we're way off topic here, but couple things I like about it. They made these bolts bigger. They used to be 10 millimeter, now they're bigger. The other ones were not big enough in my opinion. Uh, the muffler in this one, and this is a, a very, very new revision. This is a, the serial number in this one begins with a C850. This muffler does not have a CAT in it. No catalytic converter. The CS360T uh, that had a catalytic converter. I did confirm that this muffler will not physically fit on the CS360T, the, the spacing of this. Well, first of all, this one has bolts rather than studs, and the spacing between the studs is different. So you can't order a muffler for this guy and stick it on the 360. Um, the air filter is different. This one has a filter screen rather than an actual filter. I'm not sure if I like that yet. Um, the lanyard ring seems to have been downgraded. It's like this little chintzy, I don't really even know what this is anymore. I mean, it's a ring, but the one on the 360 is quite a bit beefier if you look at it. Um, what else? Oh, maybe that's it. The uh, anti-kickback is now has uh, two posts on there rather than one. The, th uh, the choke and the start stop is the same basic design. It has a primer bulb now, or a purge bulb. Not sure if I'm crazy about that because those things always seem to, to fail at the most inopportune time. Um, we'll see. So I guess that's probably time to get back on top of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. So I, I use these arborist saws all the time in the neighborhood, trimming trees and whatnot. So that'll be a project for another day. So let's get back. Oh, I also bought one of these guys. I think I'm addicted to this stuff. I don't know. I bought an Echo Pro Attachment Series 2620 Powerhead. I already have a lot of the, the attachments for this, but I decided to get a new power head primarily because, I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of the laws are changing. California passed a law recently, I think, stating that they're outlawing internal combustion engines on lawn and garden equipment below 20, 20 or 25 horsepower or some number like that. So I'm kind of look at the, looking at this and say, I think the writing's in the wall. I think they're gonna start converting all this stuff over to battery power. And while I have nothing against batteries, um, I like my gas stuff, and that's Echo's top of the line powerhead. So, hopefully, that'll last me the rest of my life that I'm able to actually use them. So, anyway, I digress. I apologize, but a lot going on here. So, let's get the Shindaiwa trimmer, the LE262, back on the bench. We got our new drive cable right here, courtesy of Parts Tree. We'll shove that in there. And then we'll just install the air cleaner, maybe a new blade, and call it a day. That's really all that thing needs. All right, let's get the uh, cable installed. Let's 
still very impressed they were able to break these, these flex cables. They had some problems with them when they first switched over to these, but they've been they've been pretty rock solid. In fact, I could probably count them one hand the number of times I've replaced one of these now. What I do, I like to grease the cable up. And seeing as how it's, there's a good possibility this uh, cable will never see grease again, I'm gonna go a little nuts. So what I usually do is I'll pull a little bit of grease in my hand with a grease gun, and I'll just kinda, you know, massage it onto the cable, if you will. No jokes, please. So about like that. This is an iterative process. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get the whole cable. But you know, just kind of go like this, lube the shaft. Keep the jokes to yourself. All right, got the shaft nice and lubed. Let's shove it in the hole. Man, I should really just stop talking. Try not to make a mess here. Might be inevitable though. There we go, it's going in. cable keyed into the clutch. I think we got it. T27 and tighten that back down. There we go. All right, let's reconnect our electrical connectors here that we pulled off is just for the kill. We gotta redo our throttle cable too. I got the throttle cable re-engaged with the, the that arm on the top of the carb. I'm just tightening down this 10 millimeter nut now. That'll hold the throttle cable in place and keep it from popping out. Give it a quick test, it works fine. All right, well, we've got this side of the motor avail available to us. Let's put the air cleaner on. We're like giving machines back with missing or dirty air cleaners. This is what protects it. I'll give you links to all these parts in the description, guys, so don't worry about that. So you put the pre-filter in here like so. This element goes on like so. Screw it back together. Kind of remarkable how alike this, how much alike this looks to the the Echo version, that past twenty six twenty. Let's 
pretty much the same machine, I would guess. There we go. All right, let's move on to the business end. So now we're going to reattach the business end. There we go. And we're just going to tighten down the pinch bolt here. making a very different sound now when we turn the blade. Much less scary than before. All right, let's stick a new blade on there. Buzz this off with a 17 millimeter socket. Maybe. Jeez, it's a reverse threaded? My goodness. Maybe we won't touch that. Didn't come in for this problem. I think I'll just give the blades to the customer and if they over tighten this and strip it, I don't want to be the guy that makes this thing not work. Once you touch it, you own it. Settle down, I was just kidding. Okay, maybe we need more air. 25 PSI of air wasn't gonna do it. Try again. Oh, great. I guess I am that guy. That thing is on there, guys. Yeah, so that blade is, I think that nut is cross-threaded. I tried two different sockets and just keeps on rounding it off. So I'm guessing that this whole cutter head assembly is gonna have to, yeah, that's gonna be a tough one. That might need a new cutter head because to get this shaft out, I believe there's a snap ring behind there that retains it, but you can't get the snap ring if this is all here. So could I grind it off and do all that? Yeah, but man, that's a tough one. I wonder what happened. Someone probably just hogged down it. It was a little boogered up when I saw it. What a shame. To the customer like this and tell them that when this blade wears out, we're gonna have to do some surgery on that cutter head. Cause I, I don't wanna hold it any longer cause I, Pretty sure they need it, um, but I'll just prep them for the fact that we have to replace that cutter head. So let's uh, let's stay focused on the original repair. Let's see if it runs in the in the blade turn. Here goes nothing. See that the blade is turning. So all fixed. At least the shaft is flex shaft. All right. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you got a Shindaiwa or Echo and Edger and or even a Weed Whacker for that matter, and the engine races but nothing at the business end turns, check your flex cable. So if you have found this video helpful, please subscribe. Stay safe and thanks for watching, everybody. And I guess maybe when it comes back for the. When that blade wears out, maybe we'll do another video on the cutter head replacement. I don't know. We'll see. So something just didn't sit right with me. I was able to get this nut off here. Boogered it up pretty good. It's a left-hand thread. So it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So I stuck my impact gun on there and put the blade in the vise. This, uh, this old blade. So rather than holding it with my hand, I clamped it down in the vise, stuck the 3 ace impact on there, and uh, turned it right, and it came right off. Well, it didn't come right off. 
came off, you know, yeah. So I got a new one of those on order, um, but yeah, if anybody has any trouble with these, they are left-hand threads. I think they're M10 by one and a quarter. So yeah, don't do righty tighty lefty loosey. It's lefty loosey righty tight. Well, no, lefty tighty righty loosey. 